So we have created our cylinder, or, uh, not our, it's a disc actually, not a cylinder. We created that poly in the center. Um, I am going to grab this big ugly poly here and I'm going to bevel this in just a little bit just to give myself a, uh, a similar row around the back edge here. I don't remember what that distance was. It looks like probably a millimeter. Um, I'm going to do that. I'm going to shift click. And I'm going to inset it a little bit more just to give myself another row of quads in the center here. And that's just really for aesthetics more than anything. It'll make your mesh look a little bit nicer back here. Um, now I can go ahead and delete that polygon out of there. I don't need it. And just to reiterate now, you see I've got 13 edges around here and I've got 13 edges around the outside of this disk. You can obviously see where we're headed with this now. I'm going to select the ones on the disk. I'm going to then select the ones around the edge of the back of the hand. And I am going to click here. I'm going to bridge and then activate that bridge tool. So I'm going to bridge it. Uh, I only need, um, I'm going to use just a single segment there because I don't think I need any more geometry in here. And uh, you can see we're getting there. That's ugly. We'll fix it in a second. Uh, let's deal with this first. So I'm going to hit B for bevel. I'm going to bring that guy in, inset by a millimeter, shift click, bring it down a millimeter, shift click again, bring it down again, delete it. So now you can see what we're left with, a nice uh, row of two rows of quads around the edge of this. When we sub-patch that, it's going to be nice and defined as it should be. And you'll notice i got some ugly stuff going on down here in these corners. That's easy enough to fix. We are first going to need another loop. I'm going to just grab, this is easier, well, let's see what happens here. I'm just going to keep double clicking this until I get what I want. Actually, I don't need these. Just need those guys. So it's basically that U-shaped partial loop around there. I'm going to activate slide tool, which I use a ton whenever I'm working in the on a subpatch mesh. I'm going to make sure it's set to duplicate and distance. I don't like percentage. Uh, distance works better for me. Uh, that will give you a more even um, slide around the edge here instead of uh, perc yeah, percentage wise it'll go wonky on you. So I'm going to click and drag that down by a millimeter. You're going to get a couple areas here where you're bordering end gons where the slide's not going to work. That's easily remedied. Uh, most of the way around here look good. We just had this one. Uh, it's not even an end gun. It's just a. Uh, it's just a strange high valence pole here coming in. You got uh, five or one, two, three, four, five. Yeah, five. Five edges coming into this vert. So you uh, you're not going to be able to slide a new edge across that. Not a problem. I'm going to drop the tool, drop those edges, and then I'm just going to use my edge slice tool, which is uh, C. Shortcut C. I'm going to click that vert. I'm going to click right there. And I'm going to turn snapping value off. It drives me nuts. Do that. And then click over here. Now you should have a nice row of edges around there. You're still looking funky here. We're going to fix that. But up here you'll notice you're looking good. So to fix those corners, if both of those corners look bad right now, we're going to fix them. Real simple like. I'm going to grab that uh, the uh, edge slice tool again. I'm going to cut here. Whoa. I'm going to cut here and there. And then I'm going to come up here and uh, here and in here. So essentially what I'm going for here is I want a nice box on each corner instead of having what I had over here what I got here is this really ugly geometry one long rectangular polygon coming in 
one square, one getting cut right through the center with another edge. That just leads to ugliness. So what I've done here is just by cutting those edges, I made a nice box. I'm going to grab this edge, hit backspace. I don't need it. It's going to pull that edge out, leaving me with this nice, perfect corner now on that edge. If I turn off my wireframe, you'll see that's really nicely shaded now. No errors. This still has the error. we got to fix it. So I'm going to edge slice it. You have that, that, and, and, and that. And I'm going to delete that. And uh, this is uh, kind of ugly. I don't know if I save that in the completed mesh. That uh, completed mesh is a little different because it's been subdivided. But uh, anyway. Again, we're on the back here. A couple triangles aren't going to mess you up because this entire back piece is planar. You'll see it's all on the same plane, so it's flat. And uh, it shouldn't cause you any problems. I'm going to turn that wireframe off, and you can see it's looking good. we got a nice, clean, circular hole cut right into the back of a subdivided mesh. And uh, it's looking good. And uh, the thumb hole was created the same way. The only difference here was that I used a um, I used a disc. Uh, it was beveled once to create a row of quads, and then I took that row of quads and just pushed it down onto this part of the mesh using a background constraint, which laid it really nicely on to this flat section of the thumb. And uh, the reason I did that is because this is not completely flat. You'll see there's a little bit of curvature there. Push that down on there, made a nice little row of quads, uh, and did the same thing. Just cut these out, grab this edge, join it up to to your row of, quad, or row of quads that uh, is making your circle there in the center, and then you got a thumb hole, which is uh, later seen here. So anyway, there's your wrist hole, and next thing to do on this guy was cut out the finger holes. These are for the little ball joints that hold the the main digits on. Um, these are really simple. The only thing I did from here to here uh, with, prior to cutting these things out was that I did one uh, subdivide. subdivide. Uh, I just did an SDS subdivide on that guy. So uh, if we're looking at this, did one. And the reason I had to do that was because I needed more mesh to support, I needed more uh, geometry in here to support these finger holes, as you can see where they needed to go. Um, I just needed a few more rows. Easiest way to do that is subdivide it. So once you've got it subdivided, you need to get this guy built. And that's really simple. It's, uh, it's a lot like uh, everything else we're doing here. You just grab the polys that are going to define your edge. Delete them straight up. How did we do this? So just grab what I think I did. The easiest way for me was I grabbed these edges, just the top two. I'm going to hit uh, Z to get the Edge Extend tool. Click in here, and I'm going to bring it down. And I'm going to shift click and bring this up. And it's just a matter of grabbing verts and joining them up. So you can see where we're going here. I'm starting to get that shape. These, I believe I... What I did here was I joined these up just by making a poly. Hitting P to create that poly. And, uh, and then from there, really simple, just a matter of coming in and using Edge Slice to extend these rows across do that for every row, do it around, you'd have to do it around this way, on the back too, you can see the one that's done here, uh, and then all you need to do is grab these edges and slide them out to create your loops, same way we did everywhere else on this mesh, and uh, that way when you subpatch this you'll get uh, these nice hard edges as opposed to these uh, funky crazy meshes. So. Uh, 
we'll finish this up in the next video.